Hello and welcome to our video tutorial on the percent %B indicator. The percent %B indicator is derived from Bollinger Bands. It effectively represents the difference between the most recent closing price in relation to the Bollinger Bands themselves. Readings of 1 represent that the price is exactly at the upper band, upper band of the Bollinger Band, while readings of exactly 0 represent that the closing price is exactly at the lower band. Uh, this indicator, unlike the RSI and the stochastic, however, is, is not a bound indicator by an absolute level, and in theory it is actually infinite, uh, because the price can always close uh, as, as a, a distance away from the bands. Uh, if we were to have a reading of 1.1, what this highlights to us is that the most recent close is above the upper band by 10% of the width of the band. Uh, if inversely we had a reading of negative 0.1, that would represent that the close is below the lower band by 10% of the width of the band. Now just as a reminder that Bollinger Bands uh, are based off two, typically two standard deviations. Uh, now generally on a normal, normal distribution, two standard deviations should contain 95% of all data. However, equity turns are not normally distributed, they're actually skewed to the upside. So realistically, two standard deviations contains around 87% uh, of all price data, so fairly significant amount. The default setting uh, for the percent %B uh, is just set off the normal settings for your Bollinger Band, uh, which are two standard deviations above and below a 20 period simple moving average. While this indicator is unbound, it does tend to have a range, uh, a maximum range between negative 0.25 and 1.25. Uh, therefore, we can use this indicator to identify both over and underbought signals, as well as identifying both strong trends and divergences. The calculation is very simple. Uh, we take the close minus the lower band and divide that by the range being the upper band minus the lower band. Now, as I mentioned, we can use this indicator to generate over or underbought readings. In this example, uh, we've used one. Uh, anything above one is considered overbought and anything below zero or at zero is considered oversold. And we can see just looking at the chart here that when we do get these readings, it's just visually easy to see using percent %B. Uh, it does tend to form uh, around near-term lows and highs from which we do see a pullback. Uh, so very useful uh, in identifying when price is heavily oversold or heavily overbought uh, for potential buying or selling opportunities. Next, we can use the Bollinger Bands to identify strong trends uh, when, when we might be in a bull market similar to the RSI that we discussed earlier. Now, as you can see, we've got a chart of SYD, which is Sydney Airport. Uh, now, typically when we are in a very strong uptrend, we don't see readings below zero. That is, we don't get a close below the lower band. Uh, you can see we get a dip here in February, but we don't actually get a close below that level. Uh, so for us, we can identify a strong trend from October 2014 here, and we can see all the way up till May 2015, that's the first time we actually get a reading back below zero, meaning that price has closed below that Bollinger Band, the lower band, and that this strong uptrend may be coming to an end. Finally, we can identify both bullish and bearish momentum divergences. Uh, just to reiterate, a divergence is where price moves in one direction, however, our indicator moves in another direction. Our first type is bullish momentum divergence. Uh, we can see an example here, again looking at SYD for Sydney Airport. In December 2015, the price moves to a low and then moves to a new low in January 2016. However, at these lows, we can see the percent %B actually forms a higher low. And what this says to us is that the distance below the, the lower band in December is greater than the distance for the close below the lower band in January, and that suggests to us that the strength of these declines are fading, potentially becoming exhausted, and price is susceptible to a reversal. And we can see that in January, actually, we do have a very sharp rally following that divergence. 
The second type of divergence is our bearish momentum divergence. Uh, this is where price moves to a new high. However, our indicator does not move to a new high. And we can see that here in October, and then we move to new highs in late November, early December. However, we form a lower high on our percent B. And what this says to us, again, is that the distance, the closing price to the upper band here is greater than the distance in late November, early December. That suggests to us that this move is not as strong as the prior move. So we have a divergence, suggests that these recent gains are becoming exhausted. Price is susceptible to a reversal. And we do see that over the next two and a half weeks where price does move lower quite quickly.